Hey everybody, it's Lynn Pratt. Thanks so much for joining me. Today we are going to paint toilet paper. So I started this as just a really funny painting that I did due to the uh, coronavirus outbreak, which of course is not funny. Um, but in the United States, there's been a toilet paper shortage. So I thought it was just funny to paint a roll of toilet paper. So to start, I've transferred my image or you can either the, draw it with pencil, um, but I'm gonna use a kneaded eraser so it's just a simple eraser that you can actually move. And if you've transferred your image and your image is super dark, this is a great thing to use to lighten that image because, because what we're drawing is white with just shadowing and things like that. You do not want your lines to be super dark. So it will look um, like a heavy outline if you leave those lines heavy. So a kneaded eraser, you can just bend and kind of move, get a clean part, and you can just pat over your drawing so it doesn't mess up the surface of your paper. And it just picks up some of that extra transfer graphite to make it a little bit lighter. So you can go ahead and do that to your transferred image. If you are drawing it freehand with pencil and not transferring, make sure you draw your image super light because you do not want super dark lines on this. Obviously, all these lines in the middle are just the pattern that's in the toilet paper. So you really don't want those as a heavy dark line. So you can go through and you can see the difference here. Go through and just lift off some of that extra graphite for some of those lines on the toilet paper. Get those lines nice and light or draw them super light with your pencil in the beginning before you get started painting. A lot of times after you paint over those lines, you're not able to lift them up anymore and you definitely don't want them dark. So go ahead and start with that. Get your drawing all set and your lines light and then we'll get started. My line drawing is super light and I'm all set to begin. So I'm gonna start with a wet into wet wash. When you're doing this painting, you wanna keep in mind that what you're painting is actually a white object. So you wanna be careful with how much darks you're putting into it because you don't want it to end up not looking white. The other thing that you wanna keep in mind when you're doing a painting like this is that we're leaving the background completely white. So even though it's a white object, you do want it to stand out against a white background. So you do want to have the edges have a little bit of color to them so that they will stand out. So I'm gonna start by just wetting the base of the front of the piece of toilet paper. So yes, it does seem very funny to be making a formal painting tutorial on toilet paper. However, you'll learn that you can learn lots of things by painting something simple and it's kind of fun. So we're doing a super limited palette on this painting. It's only done with two colors. We're using ultramarine light and burnt sienna. You can get so many different tones and values out of these two colors, it's fantastic. Okay, so I have that whole first part of my sheet wet. Now I have my burnt sienna and ultramarine mixed. If you mix them evenly, you'll get a neutral gray. But what I've done is I have mixed them with a little bit more of the burnt sienna in it. So it just has kind of a brown tone to it a little bit, okay? So going off my reference photo, I'm just adding in that shadow that goes across where the toilet paper dips down. And then I'm bringing a little bit of the color up the side. So it kind of just stands out against that white background and up towards the top as well. So it stands out from the toilet paper that's behind it. Okay. Now, because it's wet into wet, I have some time to mess around with where those colors are going to go. I want to make sure I leave that white highlight there. And I can kind of mess around with this color and have that shadow go across. These are also super easy lift colors. So when you put them down, it is easier to manipulate them and lift them and move them around. Um, so it's always fun to work with colors like that that are so easy to change around and play with a little bit. So I'm gonna put a little bit of color over 
on this edge that's shadowed just a little bit. And then I have a little bit of the shadow that's going on around this bend in the toilet paper right here. And again, I don't want my front line to just be plain white where it goes up against the background. So I'm just blending a little bit of that color down there as well. And I'm going to add a little bit more right in to where that shadowed area going across is. Okay. Now, there's a lot of texture to this toilet paper, so these colors naturally separate and will naturally granulate on the paper, um, which actually just helps us right along. So I'm going to have that color in, that main shadow down, and then at this point I'm going to get out of it so I don't end up with a bunch of blooms, and I'm going to let that dry. While I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm also going to just do a wet into wet wash going over the top of the toilet paper roll, just putting a very slight amount of color in that. I am going to do the center a different color, but because it's going to be darker and this is going to be such a light wash, I'm not worried about that at all. And I'm just going to go right over it instead of avoiding it. So I'm going to add just a little bit of color again into this so that it stands out against the other parts of toilet paper that are up to it and the background because the background is going to be completely white. If it was a dark background, I could easily leave these edges white because they would pop out against the dark background. So sometimes you change your shading just a little bit depending on what color the background of your painting is. You want it to be a nice contrast to what you have going on in your background. So by adding just a few extra little shadows or darker areas up here, and then again over on this front section where there's a much brighter highlight on the front facing toilet paper, it'll give it a lot more contrast you'll see in the end. It's important to let these areas dry before I paint my next section because I will be going right up to the edges. So for the next section, because I'm right-handed, I'm actually going to turn my paper upside down to paint this next area. When you're blending something, it's much easier to have the point of your brush towards the darker edge because it's much easier to blend it out. So when you can, it's easier to be able to turn your paper around. That's why I, I either tape it to a board or just leave it loose so that I can easily turn the paper around when I need to and make it easier for my wrist to get in and paint those areas. So I'm doing this section again as just a wet into wet wash, being careful where my water goes. Now I'm keeping it completely white over here, so I'm not even worrying about bringing that water all the way across. I'm just kind of letting it end in the middle a little bit there. So make sure my water wash is even so I don't have pooling of water before I add my paint. And now I'm adding that same mixture that I've been using going right up to that edge. Now this is why you needed this to be dry because if you went up to that edge while it was wet, it would just blend right into it, of course. So I'm being careful up here because I want that nice crisp edge of the top of the toilet paper and the nice crisp edge over here. So I'm just letting that blend right into my water. I'm going to rinse out my brush and then just blend that paint across. So this is why it's easier to turn my paper upside down because with the tip of my brush towards my darker color, it's much easier to pull it out and blend it across than it would be doing it the opposite way. So I'm just blending that out pulling it across spreading it out you have to watch how quickly it's drying because of course you don't want it to start drying and end up having blooms I do want this to be a little bit darker so I'm gonna add a little bit more right at that edge and 
just naturally blend that color and that's why we did it as a wet into wet wash so it's so much easier to blend across and then you can see I'm getting the excess moisture off of my brush before I go back in and touch that wash if I went in with a super wet brush it would just have that water and go psh and push all that paint away which is not what I want so I'm just pulling that out letting it blend in, being careful about the edges of my lines, and then again, I'm gonna let that dry. You can see I went out of my line just a little bit, so I'm gonna use my lifting brush and some clean water and a clean paper towel, and I'm just gonna clean up that edge where I went outside a little bit. Again, I know that these are super easy lift colors, so I won't have a problem at all getting that super light mark back up. So I've got that cleaned up. And then I'm gonna come in and do the inside of my toilet paper roll. So I'm using that same mixture of burnt sienna that I was using with just a little bit of extra burnt sienna in it, okay? So for that inside of the toilet paper, again, it's the burnt sienna and ultramarine with just a little bit more of the burnt sienna to give me that toilet paper roll color. So I did not do this as a wet into wet, but you easily could if you're nervous about getting that all in there at the same time. And then I'm gonna be putting a little bit more of it. And then some of the other color that has a little bit more of the ultramarine blue in it over on this side to kind of let it blend out and have that darker edge. If you don't get it as dark as you want it, once it dries, you can easily go back and darken that up make sure this side is as light as I want it as well. And we'll let that dry. While I'm still upside down, I'm gonna put my shading in on this area as well. So it gets that same color that I've been using for my other shadows. It gets quite a bit darker along this edge. And again, if you feel more comfortable, you can do this as a wet into wet because it's such a small area. I don't think it's really necessary. So I've put my color in and then I've rinsed off my brush with clear water and I'm just blending the color out to that edge because it's a little bit darker right up against that side. So I've put just a little bit more in and let it float into that water that I've just added. Bring that shadow all the way around and just let it blend and dry. But it gets a little bit lighter out towards that right side over here. Just have a natural blend there. Okay, so at this point, I'm all done with my upside down, so I can turn my paper back around at this point. Now I'm gonna start working on the shadow on the bottom. And again, I'm still using the same burnt sienna and ultramarine colors, but I'm using a little bit more blue in the mixture now. Okay, so I've got the same mixture with just a little bit of extra blue in it to tint the shadow just a little bit blue. So I have the shadow that kind of comes down and around. And in some of the areas, you can see it just gets super tiny. And then in some of the areas, it's just a little bit thicker. So where that toilet paper is just lifted up from the table a little bit, it's a little bit thicker. And it goes back to a thin line where it's not lifted. That also just gives some interest to the bottom of this. So I've exaggerated that shadow and lift a little bit, making the paper look like it's just a little bit more wavy than it actually is in the photo because it just makes it more interesting as a painting. So I've got that shadow going in across the bottom. And then there's also the shadow that's gonna be over on this right hand side. And again, I didn't put this in the drawing 
because it's an easy enough shadow to just freehand in. So it comes all along. There's a little bit of the shadow that goes up on that. I'll put a little bit in more there. And then it comes out a little bit after these areas that are lifted a little bit. And again, I've exaggerated those in just a little bit more than they are to make it more interesting. And then the edge of that paper has a slight rough texture to it. So you don't want it to look completely flat because where it does tear has that slight bumps to it. Get this shadow a little bit pointier over here and get some of those little kind of rips into the shadow as well. Make it a little bit more fun. Okay, so I've got that shadow in on the edge. Now this is the dark shadow where it's really um, dark right under the direct shadow that's cast. And then we have a softer shadow that comes out here that we're gonna do differently. So for this shadow, I'm gonna take a larger brush and I'm gonna do again a wet into wet wash. So that's how I'm gonna get the nice soft edge that I want on my shadow. So when this is area, I'm making sure it's all dry, I'm gonna wet with clean water this area of my painting. And I'm going further out than my shadow actually is. Now you wanna make sure you're doing this with clean water. If your water is dirty at this point, you're gonna end up with a dirty edge on your paper and you're gonna be able to see where that water is. If you do it with clean water, you won't have a problem at all, okay? So I've wet down that paper further than that shadow is. I have this mixture of burnt sienna and ultramarine that has more of the ultramarine in it, so it's a little bit blue, so it's a little bit different color than the toilet paper. I always like making my cast shadows a little bit more blue. I think they often really are more blue and it gives more of a contrast to what I'm painting. Okay, so you can see it's naturally blending into that water that I've put on the paper. So I've rinsed out my brush and now I'm just helping spread the edge of that and let it naturally blend out into the water on my paper, okay? And it's gonna give me that nice blended edge of that shadow I want. Now, obviously, if there was something in the background, I would not be able to do this because it would mess up the whole background. But because it's a white background, that's something that I'm easily able to do, okay? So the shadow's a little bit darker towards the center, towards the edge of the toilet paper, And then I've just let it come out and do that nice blended shadow. So now when I go in and I'm blending, you can see that I'm wiping off on my paper towel before I go in and touch the edge of that shadow. If I go in with a lot of water, it's gonna go and push that paint right away. So people that have trouble when they're doing this step where they're just kind of blending that edge softly, if you have it pushing your paint away, you have too much water on your brush and you need to come back with a dry brush. Also at this point, I'm gonna take my paper towel and I'm gonna blot the edges that I've wet. If I leave those edges, the tiniest bit of paint is gonna creep into them and I'm gonna end up with a hard water line around that shadow. So it's super important that then you take a clean paper towel, not one with color, and you come and you blot the outer edges of that paper that you've wet so that you don't get a hard water line and then I'll let that dry. Now with the same color that I've used for this shadow mixture, I've put it on my palette with more water in it. And for this, I'm using a liner brush. This is a Holbein Gold 130 number two. It is a liner brush um, and it just has a longer tip. But if you don't have one of these, you can easily just use a number two or three regular brush. You don't need a liner brush to do this at all. I just really like them. Um, so I've got that lighter mixture on my brush and I'm just gonna go through and again with just the lighter mixture and add some detail to these lines. Now, I don't wanna make the pattern in the toilet paper 
super dark and like really the focal point. I'm just adding some color to them. This is why I use that kneaded eraser in the beginning so that the lines would not be so dark because again, they add interest to the painting, but they're not the focal point. So you don't want those lines to be so super dark. So make sure you're doing this with a light wash of color on your brush. And if you don't have a liner brush, you can just use, of course, any regular small brush to do this. You'll notice that a smaller brush just doesn't hold quite as much paint as a liner. You'll just have to reload more often, which of course is not an issue. So again, I'm using that mixture that has just a little bit more blue in it and I'm just adding these details to these lines. You don't have to add all of them in if you don't want to depending on how much you want to show on your painting. You don't necessarily have to show them or not. That's totally up to you. There was a couple areas where it said Charmin, but I decided I did not want to write Charmin across my painting. Not necessarily highlight a certain brand of toilet paper in my painting. So I just left it plain and just put some of those details in. There was a couple little points where there is marks on them. Okay, so that's all I'm putting in for that detail of that. I'm also going to do the same thing with these marks up at the top of the toilet paper. I'm just adding a few in just to kind of give you the idea that there's paper going around in that roll. I'm going to add some more with texture lines as well, but just a few kind of little dash marks showing you know, the direction, direction that the paper is going around in there, okay? Make sure they go with the direction of the paper so that they don't look strange. I've got that all in. I'm going to go in and just darken up a tiny bit with that same color that I was using for the inside of my paper towel roll because it does get really dark over in this corner. So now that that's dry, I'm just adding that little bit and blending it out. Okay, just to darken up that area just the tiniest bit. And then I'm going to darken up a few of these areas on my toilet paper as well, where it was bunched up a little bit and there's a little bit of a, a shadow cast now again, I've exaggerated this from what is actually on the roll of toilet paper. So if you look at your reference photo, these aren't quite as dark, but I think they make it look more realistic, a little more interesting. Okay, so I'm just adding to it a little bit. Okay, and then the toilet paper also has texture. So you can see as I'm going, I'm switching brushes. I'm just using whatever brush I feel like um, is the best for that size that I'm putting in. Okay, so now I'm coming in and I'm just adding a little bit of darker area to this and adding some texture. So I have a little bit of paint on my brush. I've blotted it off on my paper towel. So I have more of like a dry brush texture to it. And I'm just adding a little bit of that in, in the darker areas of the toilet paper where that shadow really kind of comes down. To really give you the idea that the toilet paper is bent there, but that there's also a texture. So there's texture everywhere else as well. So I'm just have a super light wash on my brush and I'll put in a little bit of that texture, any shadows that didn't quite go in. I can darken things at this point. So at this point, you really just want to look at your own painting and decide what needs to be fixed or moved or, you know, darkened on your painting. So just because mine might need something in a certain area doesn't mean yours does. I'm going to make this just the tiniest bit. 
darker over here, even though really it isn't. And I'm going to do it by just adding a little bit of texture. And that way it kind of just sticks out on the page just the tiniest bit more. So even though that is a brighter area, really, in order to make a better painting, I'm going to add some color to that. Okay, the same to this top right area. Okay, and I'm just going to do it in kind of a dry brush way to give a little bit more texture. But you can see by just adding that little bit of color there, it makes that corner kind of lift and pop out a little bit more. Okay, so I'm just using a little bit of dry brush to give a little bit of texture in just a few places. Don't overdo it. You don't want to add too much. But to show that there is some texture to that roll, the same was up here where it gets totally white. I'll add just a little bit texture going into where it's fading off. And now between this, this really is kind of the color that it is. But instead, I'm going to make this shadow the tiniest bit darker down here. And kind of right up against the edge of that roll to really make it stand out a little bit more so that it really looks like this is behind it and this is pop forward and kind of blend that in with a little bit of dry brush and then on this top one again I'm just going to use a little bit more of a dry brush technique to highlight the edge of that roll the edge of that forward paper not too dark but just enough so that it pops against that back highlighted area okay so I think at this point I have just about everything in where I need it and I think I will call that done so thank you so much for joining me in this tutorial I hope that during this sickness scare that you can find more toilet paper than what we have drawn um so thanks so much for joining me let's paint